Mark and I first tried Catastronauts at the EGX Resd event in London last year. It's a space themed action party game and it's now complete and about to hit the switch. So does it boldly go where no game has gone before or is it having to cling on for dear life? I'm so sorry, bad puns are usually Mark's area of expertise. Anyway, I'm Glenn for Switch Up, thanks to the developers for the review copy and now let's find out. Catastronauts is very similar in gameplay to the Overcooked series, in that you must multitask, keeping a host of metaphorical plates spinning in order to complete an objective. Whilst the similarities are wholly apparent, I'm happy to report that Catastronauts does have a few little tricks of its own too. Whereas in the Overcooked series the aim is to fulfil food orders to make as much money as possible before the timer runs out, Catastronauts takes a slightly different approach. It is, of course, set in space, but the differences go past just that of the setting. Both your ship and that of your enemies have a health meter. The aim is to deplete your enemy's health bar before they manage to deplete yours. In order to deplete theirs, you must use your guns to attack, and to ensure that your bar remains at a suitable level, you must repair any damage done to your ship by the enemy's guns. Your guns must recharge after each use, meaning that you need to find a nice rhythm for in which order to fire them in order to be the most effective and get the most shots off. As you progress through the game, the amount of guns available to you will grow and will include ones that will need to be loaded with missiles or ones that must be charged by batteries, with the batteries needing replacing after a few uses. Sometimes you will have a mixture of these weapons. Do you predominantly use the smaller guns, doing damage little and often, or do you take the time to load up the missile launcher for more damage but risk taking damage in the meantime? As mentioned, every time you are attacked your ship takes damage. To repair this you must use the toolbox. Sometimes the damage will start a fire and in these times you will need to use the fire extinguisher first before you can make any necessary repairs. As well as the ship itself, your guns can also be damaged and it's important that you keep these well maintained. While this all sounds very simple, there is a very satisfying sense of risk and reward. As you whittle down your enemy's health, do you neglect to repair your own ship for a while in order to go on the attack and finish them off? If so, just be sure to keep an eye on your ship's health bar, otherwise you may well find yourself snatching defeat from the jaws of victory. It is also quite easy, especially early on, to get so wrapped up in the constant maintenance of your ship that you can actually forget to attack back. The first couple of times I played, I was making repairs, expecting to have to survive until the timer ran out before realising that the timer was actually going upwards and I'd be doing this all night if I didn't actually launch an attack of my own at some point. New features are added at a decent pace early into the game, so that you feel like you are making progress but at the same time never feel too overwhelmed. These new features include the new guns mentioned earlier, as well as other mechanics such as using teleporters, discarding of bombs, and initiating shields to avoid missile attacks. Each level grades you with up to 3 stars depending on how quickly you manage to complete the stage, and the urge to go back and earn maximum stars on a level, should you have not managed so the first time round, is certainly compelling. As you would expect with the game being inspired by Overcooked, Catastronauts, while being available to play in single player, is weighted heavily towards multiplayer action. In single player you must switch between two characters with a press of the R button, and this can get a little confusing at times. As you move through the levels, the sheer amount you need to do whilst coordinating the character switch mechanic can become a little too much and it does really affect the enjoyment factor. The game just seems to spike in difficulty when playing in single player and it becomes quite a frustrating experience. Thankfully there are no such problems in multiplayer though, and with up to 4 player local multiplayer supported, this is where the game really shines. Just to make it clear, it is local multiplayer only, there is no online mode. Cooperation and communication are key if you are to be successful, as you will need to coordinate the use of items and find a successful formula in order to clear the levels in the best possible time. The gameplay cherry picks the successful parts from games of a similar ilk, whilst adding a few ideas of its own. Single player really does let the side down, but multiplayer is a lot of fun, and on balance, gameplay receives 14 out of 20. Controls are easy to learn, with character movement being controlled with the left stick, 
the A button allowing you to pick up or put down items and the Y button allowing you to use said items. Pressing the B button enables your character to run and clever use of this will see you shave invaluable seconds off of your time. Button presses seem responsive with no lag between the press and the commands being carried out on screen and this is something that's very important in a game where you are racing against the clock. There will no doubt be the odd occasion, particularly early on, where you may pick up a recently dropped item rather than say maybe fire a nearby gun, but this will be more of a result of the frantic nature of the game rather than through a fault of the controls. The switching mechanic when playing in single player does take some getting used to and it would have been useful if they had just made it a little more obvious which character you are currently controlling. The vast majority of the time you will know anyway, but when things get particularly hairy and there's a lot going on, having to constantly change can lead to a little confusion. On the whole though, controls receive 16 out of 20. In terms of its presentation, the game makes a fairly good first impression by way of a main hub world. You will find the entry point for the various levels within the spaceship and there are a few nice little touches within this hub such as other crew members carrying out various activities. There is an excessive amount of grey within the colour palette and whilst I do appreciate that grey is probably a bit of a go-to colour when creating a spaceship, I'm sure they could have got their creative juices flowing just a little bit more. How about levels set in the botany department with man-eating plants or in quarantine with all of the alien life forms? Things just seem a little bit bland in all honesty. There are a variety of quirky characters, all looking very Star Trek-esque as you may expect, but character models on the whole are fairly simple. In terms of the audio, the music is fairly suitable for the frantic nature of the game. Any character speak is done in quite a comical mumble that just adds a little charm to proceedings. Visuals are serviceable without ever truly shining and receive 14 out of 20, whereas the audio also receives 14 out of 20. Catastronauts costs £12.99 or $16.99 and with this pricing it sticks to my one golden rule. It's a rule that many games fall foul of yet it's just so simple. If you are competing with the game that you are inspired by, price your game competitively in comparison to said game. Unlike so many kart racers that attempt to match the price of Mario Kart, Catastronauts comes in a good £8 or $9 lower than the Overcooked sequel making it an attractive alternative to that series. With the European release date being just before Christmas, this is a perfect impulse price for new Switch owners with family around looking for a party game and value receives 16 out of 20. To conclude, Catastronauts is a fun, hectic and stressful party game that serves as a stark reminder of exactly what the Switch does best just in time for a new intake of fans to experience after unwrapping the units currently sitting under the tree in their front room. It wears its local multiplayer hook boldly on its sleeve and you could do a lot worse in downloading this when looking for an evening's entertainment with the relatives. Longer term, the appeal will definitely start to wane if going solo where things are just too difficult to be fun, but if you are a fan of Overcooked and you have diced every onion that there is to dice then perhaps consider beaming yourself up into space for a similar frontier. Catastronauts gets a switch up score of 74%. Thank you as always everybody for watching. Which Switch game are you hoping to get for Christmas? Or which Switch game will you be playing with family members on Christmas Day? Stick it down in the comments below and we'll see which ones are the most popular.
please consider subscribing if you haven't done so already and liking the video again if you like what you've just seen and as always happy gaming